Yep, and see my recording failed. All right, so uh, moving on. So uh, reading web files and websites. So I just realized this is the broad stuff, and it had the specific things you had to know about dictionary down here. Oh, that's great. Okay. So yeah, I guess I'm just going to go down this list, and then uh, I'll get back to uh, dictionaries and also the URL stuff. Um, so yeah, I can get all in one swoop. All right, so uh, let's go look at import random. So what does this statement do? Well, there is a uh, library within Python uh, called random. And uh, random number generators, like, you know, those, those sound hard to make, right? So instead, we just let the, let the Python developers make them. We're just going to use them. We're going to basically steal them uh, from the, the library. So here we go. So this says, all right, I want to bring in all the code that runs the random stuff. All right, so we got that. Now, it looks like they want you to know uh, rand range and uh, shuffle from the library random. And if you want to see all the uh, ones from there, you can go to the, the API up here or just Google uh, Python random. And then uh, you'll see here, and it, they usually have a list of methods down here. We've got rand range, rand int, choice, shuffle, sample, all that stuff. So yeah, if you're interested in that, go look at that. Um, but it looks like they just want you to know rand range and shuffle. So... So basically, what rand range is is uh, how a random dot ram range. Uh, you, you basically just pass in a uh, a low a value and a high value, and uh, it'll print out what you want. Uh, so this is count kit. I'm gonna show you this real quick. Um, I'm just gonna comment this out. Um, yes. So uh, we're basically we're just gonna print out random dot ram rand range, random dot ram range. Say that five times fast. All right. Uh, from zero to one hundred. So that's gonna print out some random number between uh, zero and one hundred. So if we print it out. Um, so you're going to get 0 that time. Okay, that's pretty lucky. What are we going to get next? Um, uh, 32. All right, I'll try to guess this one. Guess it. Uh, 69, okay. Uh, and then one more. Uh, all right, yeah, so this basically is going to be different every single time because it's a random number generator. Um, so let's see if you want to do like a whole bunch of them. Let's say this is going to be do uh, 100 of them. Um, so I think. Uh, and then, uh-oh. Oh, oh I, I left this stuff here. I'm actually going to keep this commented out. Sorry for the stumbling. There we go. Look at all these random numbers. Cool. And it's going to be different every time I run it. All right. So uh, then I just made this little test down here to show you that. Um, so I'm pretty sure uh, if you uh, th if you do rand range, it's going to include this lower number, 0. So if we say, uh, well, x is not 0, we're going to reset it and see, see if it ever equals 0, right? So uh, we're going to run it. Oh, we got lucky. So there we go. So it equals 0. However, I don't think it includes 100. So uh, if I do this. Um, I don't think this is going to just run forever because, uh, yeah, it's never going to hit 100. So yeah, the, what we're in footage does is it goes from 0 up and 2 and not including the last one right there. So there we go. Next, we're going to look at uh, random.shuffle. So basically, basically what shuffle does is uh, it shuffles a, a list here. So uh, so if you have this nice ordered list, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 7, yeah, so so much time ordering them, but now we're just going to shuffle them up, right? Uh, so uh, what is this going to print out? What do you think? So we have random.shuffle, x, and then um, actually, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna get rid of this real quick. So let's say we just print random dash of x. What do you think it's gonna print? Um, so it's actually a quick, trick question. So uh, this is gonna give you none because remember this, this is one of those things that's not gonna return anything. It's just gonna do something, right? So uh, if you're coming from Java, it's like a void uh, void uh, method. So um, so what we can do is we can do random dash of x and then print x, and then uh, it's gonna be uh, some random order. And then we can uh, we do this several times actually. We'll see. Uh, you're just gonna shuffle them different times. Uh, there we go. Well, it looks like we're talking about strings next. Basically, uh, so basically, what's a substring in string? It's just gonna say, see if we can find uh, this little chunk uh, within this bigger uh, string. So if we say, um, so we have, uh, uh, we're gonna look for the word two in this in this big uh, string right here, and I don't see a two in there actually. So that's just gonna be pretty out false. Right. Oh, is there one in there? Um, oh, there, there it is. Yeah. Uh, so if I get rid of this one, I think it'll be false. Um, yeah, false. There we go. Uh, and so we can, we can hide it better, too. Uh, Python, you know, it's going to find it. Uh, so I'm going to do all this stuff. I'm going to put a 6 and then put stuff. All right, I'm going to see if um, 6 is in there. So, oh, true. Found it. Cool. So, yeah, you cannot uh, hide from Python. One of those boundary cases we can check is if it's actually the exact same string. Uh, so do you think 6 is going to be in 6? Well, obviously, uh, yeah. Uh, true. There we go. So yeah, so the in is going to actually return uh, a, uh, a Boolean value. So, And as we'll see, this will also work for lists, but I'll show you when we get there. All right, so then we're going to talk about concatenation. So when you add, do a plus sign between two uh, strings. Basically what this does is that, uh, it's going to join uh, two strings together. So uh, so I have a bunch of strings here, and I'm going to have these plus signs. So it's going to smash them all together. So uh, what, what do you think the problem is going to be with this? Um, so I'm going to put it up. And um, yeah, it looks like we, we're missing some spaces here. And this is going to be a... Common problem uh, when you're when you're concatenating things. So you just gotta remember uh, to go ahead and uh, 
put a space uh, in between um, each one. So I can put a space right there, and then um, let's see. Yeah, and then wow, cool. Um, so I believe the the thing that's gonna mess you up with this is if you um, let's say x uh, equals uh, six or something. So normally we we can just print out um, x without making it a string or something. Um, yeah, six right there. But um, when we try to concatenate it, you're gonna get some problems. So if I if I put x right there, it's gonna say, oh, you can't use plus with uh, with a string in it. I can't add that. Like I can only add two strings. So yeah. So what we have to do in order to do that, you just have to do str of x, which will coerce it to a string. So um, yeah, when I grow, yeah, there we go. Cool. You know, string dot lower and string dot upper. Pretty simple. So uh, what what hello is going to do? Uh, or hello dot lower. Actually, I'm gonna, I should probably make this capital so you can see it. Um, it's going to make it all lowercase, uh, which is most helpful when you're getting user input. You want to see if their user input equals something, and you don't want to worry about capital letters. You can just uh, make it all lower, right? Um, and then another thing is uh, upper is going to make this all this. So basically. Uh, this is going to swap these two. This one's going to become all lower like this one. This one will become all upper like this one. And then uh, you don't have to do this one, but it's, I, I just like a uh, uh, title is going to just, just change this H to a capital H, uh, not jello. Uh, oh, just like that. So uh, let's see if that works. Um, so we have uh, dot lower gate made it all in lowercase, and then uh, dot upper made it all uppercase, and then title made it uh, title. So cool. We have a uh, strip. Um, so sometimes you get a uh, a string here, and you have like like all these like spaces on the outside. Usually when you're reading from files, you get this problem, or, or from the web uh, web or something like that. And uh, it's kind of annoying because when you when you print it out, like you're gonna have all this space to deal with. Like that, that looks so ugly, right? So uh, this is the easy way to fix this. Instead of going like you know, oh, I'm gonna go through and like remove the spaces or something. Um, so we can just do dot strip, and just like that. And yep, we're just gonna get high, just like that. And if you don't believe me, um. Let's see. What I did here is I added some, made it uh, that equal to x, so then I can print it with like little quotes that I put in there, so you can see that there are no spaces. So there we go. So and by default, strip is uh, with no arguments here is going to remove all the white space. So what is white space? So you can have a you can have a, a space there. I think what if I put a tab in there? What does that do? Is that still going to run? Um, it's getting rid of that too. Um, so then I can also like um, I can put in uh, tab uh, escape characters, break them in here. I can put uh, some new lines in here. Uh, put some uh, new lines over here. And this is I still claim that this is going to get rid of all of that stuff because this is all white space, right? So um, I'm gonna print this out and yep, still just have hi just like that. So um, let's say we want to uh, do something different now. So instead of just getting rid of the white space, let's say that for some reason when we get the thing. It's going to have all these ends on, on, the, on the outsides of it. Um, so what we can do is we can strip n. So then, there we go. It's going to strip all the ends. And um, if I make an odd number of ends, let's see, it's like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And then uh, if I strip n, n, I think there'll be one left over. So just so you see how this works. Um, oh, wait. Yeah, so I was wrong. So what you can do is you can put any letters that you put inside of strip, and right, if they're on the outside of the string, they're going to go away. So yeah, I have uh, pizza here, and I just put in the letters that are in pizza in a different order. And that's actually just going to get rid of all of those. So uh, yeah, there you go. They're gone. So one tricky thing is uh, if we have the, the, the ends have to be on the outside, right? So uh, if I, so if I, if I run this, uh, you can see they, they go away, and we just have that, that white space left. Um, and then I actually get rid of the white space, too, if I add a little space in there, right? So then... Um, let me just have high. Um, so let's say we just have the ends still. Um, and what if I put a little space in right here? Do you think it's going to get rid of these ends? Well, actually, no, because uh, what it does is it gets to, it takes off this one, and it goes, oh, where it spaces now, it's different than the end, so I'm going to stop stripping. So, yeah, so then we still have those there. If you want to get rid of both, you can just put space right there. And then, yeah, it looks like they all go away. Cool. All right, I don't know if you had to go in that uh, deep, but uh, all right, so then we're going to look at split. So basically what split is, is when you have a string and you want to make a list out of it. So how do you do that? So I'm going to make a big uh, string called x, and I'm going to type a bunch of stuff and put a 5. I'm going to type a bunch of stuff and put a 5. Let's type a bunch of 5. 5, 5, 5. Okay, and then what I'm going to do, I'm going to say print um, x dot split on... Five. And what this is going to do is it's going to search this string, and then every time it finds a five, basically imagine it puts a comma there and then makes it a new list item. Okay, so uh, yeah, so then we have without the five, then there's a five there, and then there, and there, there, there. So um, yeah, and then uh, so by default, uh, it's actually going to I'll show you. Well, let's say we have string, 
uh, like this. Uh, that is a true statement. Um, and we're going to split on five. Well, there's no fives in here, so what's going to happen? So it's going to just going to be um, just one element in the list. Um, but that's not actually what I came to show you. So uh, if you put no arguments within the split, uh, what do you think happens? So uh, the default for a split um, is actually going to be the spaces. So it's going to do all the spaces there. Um, and what if I do multiple spaces? I think um, it might make multiple things. Oh no, this oh see, so if you it's gonna, if you have a doesn't matter how many spaces you have, I guess it's just gonna concatenate all that all or take it all out and then there you go. All right. Um, so and then so basically you can imagine it as the the default is like a, just one space in there. So there we go. Oh well, now it's gonna count them. Okay, that's interesting. So if we have nothing, it looks like it's going to. Uh, not care how many spaces there are, but if we, we can specify how many spaces there are going to be, if we put one, two, then look at this, we have uh, these three, uh, four empty elements there, so interesting. And split on delimiter, that's just what I was showing you, where uh, if we have a have something where, we, let's say we can split on commas, so we can uh, split comma, 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 comma. So it should look, have a list, it looks just like this, if we split it on the comma, and then yeah, so it looks like we have hojibus and hojibus. Yeah, yeah, cool, same. All right. That's so now we're going to get string dot find substring. So basically, with this, uh, you have a uh, string, and you're looking for some kind of substring or a smaller string within the string. And uh, so basically, what x dot find of that substring is going to return is going to return the index value of where the first letter of that is. So if you look here, we have zero. Uh, space one, space two, three, four, five, and then uh, so six is right where it starts. It is at six, right? So find should give us six. So um, if I print this out, uh, we're gonna get six. So there we go. So uh, what does find return if we actually don't find anything? Uh, do you remember? Uh, so it's actually just gonna be negative one. Um, so this is a quick difference. Um, I don't know if you have to know index, but it, uh, index basically does the same thing as find here, or it'll give us six. But uh, if we don't find it, instead of getting negative one, we're going to get an error. So if you want your program to actually fail if you don't find it, uh, then that's what you can do. Um, so yeah, there you go. Let's say we don't really care about the first pizza. We want to find the second pizza in there. So how do we how do we kind of skip over the first pizza? Because it's going to only look at the first pizza, right? So it's going to look at a girl from the left, and it's going to find that first pizza. And uh, there we go. It's going to be six. We don't want that. So uh, what we can do is we can have it say, "I want you to I want you to skip this by uh, let's, let's let's just say you start at seven, and then it's going to go, "Oh, I see Ezo. Well, that's not pizza." So you're just kind of fooling it, I guess, a little bit. But yeah, so we're going to start at seven, uh, and it's going to search basically this part, and we're going to find that pizza right there, which is at index 16. There we go. And for you coding wizards, you can also use R find. It's going to search from the right instead of the left, and then you also get 16. So just fun fact. All right, talking about lists, my favorite thing. Correction, my favorite thing is actually dictionaries, but okay. All right, so what is a list? The list is a list. Well, you know what a list is. Okay, uh, so let's say x equals, we're going to make it 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And uh, the first thing I want you to know is element in list. So what we can do is we can print, uh, let's say, 1 in x. It's going to be true, right, because there's a 1 in the x. And we can also do, uh, say, uh, 5 in x, and then, um, yeah, that's also true. But if we put is uh, pizza, pizza in X, um, is that going to be true? Uh, nope, that's going to be false because there's no pizza in there. Well, let's make it true, right? So um, can we do this? Can we put strings in uh, numbers? Oh, uh, I mean uh, numbers in there too? Yes, true. So there we go. So it's just kind of like our element in our substring and string. We're basically take whatever the big thing is. If there's some, that, that little thing you're looking for in there, then this is going to evaluate to true. So all right, then uh, append. So uh, all right, so you know append, uh, what it does is it adds uh, one more value to the list, and uh, whatever value you want to add, you pass in right here. So uh, what is this going to print out? Print x dot append 0. So pause the video, think about it. So uh, actually, another trick question, it's going to be none, because it, uh, what append is doing is it's just doing an action. It's not going to return anything. Uh, and if you're coming from Java, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's basically a void uh, element, uh, method. Don't worry about that. Um, so um, basically what we have to do is, uh, well, we could leave that print statement in there, it's just not going to do anything, but we want to print x after it. So um, when you actually do the action, it's not going to return anything to the print statement, it's just going to be, do the action, it's go, oh, what do you want me to print? I don't I don't have anything to print, no, there you go. Then, uh, but then it's going to print x with that zero appended, and what append is doing is just going to add it to the list right there, to the end. So um, uh, when we print out, yeah, so it's going to add that zero right there. So, cool. 
Let's say we, we want the zero to be right before pizza. How can we do that? So we're going to use something called insert. So I'm going to change the problem a little bit just to make it a little easier. I'm going to, I'm going to put a zero here, and I'm going to say we're going to we want to put um, uh, yay pizza. And we're going to put, we're going to put yay right before pizza. How can we do that? So if we put a pen, um, and uh, actually we're just going to get out um, uh, yay at the very end. We want yay pizza there, right? So uh, let's see. Well, I'll go ahead and pause the video and try to see what, what I would write here to get uh, yay right before this pizza. Uh, so, so um, assuming you give it to go, so we're going to x dot insert um, at index. Well, what, what index do we want to put at? So we have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. You don't want to put it at 4 because then, if we, well, I'm going to show you what happens if we put it at 4. Um, and then we're going to put at, so insert at 4, yay. And uh, the problem with that is uh, it's going to push this 4 over right there. Yeah, so you put it at index 4, so now it became 4, and now that 4 is in between. So we actually want it to be 5. So this is basically going to take the index value of pizza right now. Um, and yeah, so we're going to have yay pizza. So basically what it's saying, insert at index 5. So where index 5 is is where, where this is going to be. Um, so then actually we can do print x5 now and see that it is indeed yay. So uh, yeah, so in the, at index 5 we're going to do yay and we're going to have yay pizza. So yeah, there we go. Next we have uh, remove. Quick aside, also notice that uh, insert uh, also returns none if you print it. So uh, yeah, there we go. All right, so on to remove. Right, so basically what you do is, uh, what we're doing is we're removing a value. And don't put the index in here. Remember, it's the actual value that you're looking for. So uh, let's say we don't want pizza in here. We're like, wait, we want to list the numbers. There's no pizza in here. So we're going to remove pizza right there. So, uh, and also this one is going to print out none when you try to print it. Because, when again, it says, uh, okay, I removed pizza. But like, what do you want me to print? I'm just going to, you know, none. There you go. Uh, in your face, you know. <laughs> so, the, so, yeah, it basically gets rid, gets rid of the pizza. Uh, yeah, there we go. All right, and then we have a uh, pop, and we're going to pass in an index in that here, not instead of a value. So when we remove the value, you're going to pass in what the value you're looking for. But now if we want to pop out the, the uh, pizza here, we can do the same thing. But uh, um, remember, pop is going to actually basically do the same thing as remove, but it's also going to return it. So we're not going to get none here anymore. So I'll show you. So let's see, we're going to do x dot pop, and then uh, see pizza 0, 1, 2, 3, it's at 5. So it should, so if I did this right, so it should return pizza here, and then return a list without pizza. So you have pizza, and then a list without pizza. Cool. So what's the difference between pop and remove? Um, so if we bring back a remove, um, remove did the same thing, it just removed from the list, but we get none when we print it out. But pop is actually going to return it uh, when we pop it off. So... Yeah, then we're going to get the actual pizza there. And remember, the uh, pop is the index, and uh, remove is the value you're looking for um, right there. So, all right, now list.sort. So real quick, if we try to call this with pizza in here, what's going to happen? Well, uh, we're going to get an error, because you can't uh, compare less uh, strings and ints with less than. So you can compare strings with less than greater than. It's going to sort them in alphabetical order. So if we do uh, x.sort, um, so what's this going to print out, you think? Well, uh, this is another one of those things. It's going to put down none. And then it's going to be an alphabet order. I love that. Okay. And just to show you again, uh, I have a list of numbers here, and then I uh, did sort. And I remember when I printed out, it's going to get none because it's one of those things that doesn't return anything. And then it's going to print out the uh, sorted list. So, yeah, there we go. Let's say we want it sorted, but we want it in uh, descending order. So, what we can do is we can use x.reverse, which is, I guess, the next thing on the list here. Um, and uh, so, again, this is another one that's going to print none. So, uh, so we do x.sort uh, there, it's going to return none, and it's going to return in order, and then uh, none here, and then in reverse order. So, let's see what we have. We have none in order, none in reverse order. Good. We'll look at uh, list.index element. Let's say we have a uh, we have a, oh, let's record, yes. Uh, so we have a list, and we have, we're trying to find the index value of pizza. Because we want to, like, uh, find, like, we want to print it out, but we need to know what index it is. Uh, so what we can do is we can do x.index pizza, and uh, it will print out it is at number five. So, good. Um, oh yeah, and uh, if it doesn't find it, uh, what do you think is going to happen? Well, it's actually just going to give you an error. I'm not negative one, my point it doesn't find it in a string, it's going to give you an error. So, so then we have uh, list collection. Basically, what it's saying is, uh, we can use this list operator, this this keyword. See, it turns blue with mine when I use it, and uh, you can use this on these uh, collections you have up here. So strings, lists, tuples, and range. So let's try it on a string first. So let's say uh, we're gonna do print um, uh, list, and then we're gonna say hello, I like pizza a lot, 
going to print this out, and each character in the in your string is going to become an element of a list, including those spaces there. So whenever you do a list of a string, you take each character and you make it a list. Remember, if you want it to be the actual words uh, instead of uh, each character, what you would do, if you remember, can you guess it? It would be stat, uh, split. So there you go, now it's going to be on those pieces. All right, so then, um, let's see, what else can we do? We can also do it on range, it said, right? So we can do uh, print list, then um, range, so let's see, 0 to 10, say. And there we go, we got a list. Uh, remember, it doesn't always go to 10, but up to 9, so there we go. Ah, we can go crazy too. We can do it. Make it really, really big. And uh, there you go. Look at that giant list. Cool. All right. I can also do it on uh, tuples. So um, let's see. I'm going to make a tuple right here. Do, 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 do. If we actually want to change stuff in the tuple, we can make a new list, right? So, oh, too many parentheses. Oops. There we go. Yep, there we go. And then, uh, and then obviously you can make a list out of a list. It's kind of redundant, but uh, yeah, there you go. It's a list list, cool. Well, not a list of lists, like it literally just makes a list again. Uh, there you go. Well, we've already kind of gone over this. We have range and range uh, start with an end and a start and end of the step. So I'll, I'll just go over one more time. I'm going to use this uh, list right here. So, all right, so I claim that all three of these things do the exact same thing. Do you see why? And remember, uh, what the list does is basically taking this weird range object of Python where it's turning into a list. Um, so uh, why would these all be the same? Do, or are they going to be the same? Well, let's take a look. So, yeah, so they all make the same thing. Uh, 0 to 9. So, uh, what it's saying is, I want to make a range from 0 to 10. So, it says, all right, all right, from 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 7, 9. And it says, range up to 10. All right, so 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 7, 9. And then, um, then this one says, I want to go 0 to 10. I want to make steps of 1. So, then also 0 up to 9. So, basically, there's, there's the reason I have three, these three different things. Because uh, this one uh, is kind of like the, the, the shortcut way you just make a range 10. Let's say you want to start at 5. So, we can start at 5 and go like that. So 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Uh, and then, if you want to change that and, um, we also want to say uh, only go at steps of 2. So, then that's going to give us 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Um, it's good. Um, let's, say, let's, let's just see this better. Let's see, go to 100 steps of um uh, let's say three start at 50. so you can get all kinds of ranges so see 50 53 56 59 so you go all the way up to 98 um and i guess uh 99 is in list of three so there you go so you can just put the end value you can put the start in the end we can just start end and step okay I know, I know step can get a little confusing at times especially when we have something like three but basically what you want to think is uh you start on this value on uh, the first one that you have and then, uh, so you know that that one's guaranteed, and then you can just count up uh, by threes from that one. So there you go. And you know the last one, which would be 99, may not be included because it might not be in this step. So, all right. And dictionary of keys, values, items, and pops. So I'm just gonna go over those again. Basically, basically I just took uh, these and I just kind of printed them out here. So try to think about what these are gonna print out. And I, I have one is Oreos. Uh, Array is uh, just a, a list of just two, and then milk is H. Uh, so so what, what is keys, what is values, and what is items? So, um, yeah. So, let's see, we have uh, this dict keys thing, and then we have dict values, and we have dict items. These are like, uh, and if you look at the type of these, remember, um, so we do type of this, it's going to be type dict keys. So it's not going to be a list, right? So if you want to make it a list, you can use that list uh, operator that we were using earlier. So I'll do that real quick. Actually, making these into a list uh, makes it a little easier to work with. So uh, this, this is going to be all the keys, and this is going to be all the values, and then these are going to be uh, tuples with uh, the, uh, the key and the value. So uh, see, we have a list of the keys, which was uh, one, hooray, and milk. And then uh, the list of um, uh, values, which was or yours, a list with two, and then h. And then uh, the items is going to be these tuples with these pairs. So we have one is or yours, and hooray is two, and then milk is h. So yeah, and then um, and then, so d dot pop. So what this is gonna be like, kind of like a list where uh, you take it, you take the the one at uh, at value one, you're gonna return it. Um, so it's gonna go there, but then it's gonna be deleted. So if we print uh, d after this, then uh, so it's not gonna have or yours anymore. Um, so yeah, sad or yours list uh, 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 dictionary. Right, so now we're gonna be looking at files, and um, I made this little file here called oryours.txt. I shall uh, copy that to my clipboard. But um, oh no!
no, 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 no. Uh, can I? Don't save. Oof, that was close. Okay, got it back. Uh, so yeah, I have this file. I'm gonna do stuff with this, so I'll show you. So uh, I'm not seeing, um, oh, open, right there. Okay, cool. So uh, what you want to do is you want to make a variable, usually, and uh, say, uh, y, uh, you know, for some reason, I always make a Y for some reason. But, uh, so Y equals open, and then your file name, and then comma whatever mode you're going to be in, and R is going to be read mode for this one. So I think there's some other way that they might teach you with, like, a with as. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show this way because I think it's a little easier, but if you want to use the way you learned in lecture, if that is the way you learned in lecture, please do that. Um, yeah, it's just the way I learned, so um, I all right, so it looks like we have read and read line and read lines and um okay uh okay oh yeah this is just three ways to look at it. so yeah we'll look at each of those all right so first I right, so i went ahead and opened uh oreos actually in in here so you can see it um so what was the first thing we do uh let's, let's just read out the whole thing um so we're in read mode right um so let's see so you're gonna print um it's gonna say y dot read it's going to print out the whole thing. There we go. And um, so basically what y.read does, it takes the whole file and makes it into one big string. So then you can print it out or something like that. Uh, or you can like start parsing it with different things and stuff like that. But say you only want the first line. So what we can do is say read line. And I think that'll make the first line a string and print it out. So yeah, this, we have I like Oreos, which was in our file, the first line. So the difference between read line, read line just gives you the first one. And then read gives you the whole thing. And then one thing that's kind of confusing is, uh, so if we have read line, uh, it's a very subtle difference. We have the first thing as a string, but if we make read lines with an S, uh, then it's going to take each line in the file and it's going to make uh, a, a list out of it. So, so we do read lines and uh, we have each line in the list is going to be this. Oh, but we have this little uh, backslash n here. How do we get rid of that? Um, so yeah, we'll, we'll, get to, we'll get to that. It's basically what this list uh, item is saying right here is uh, we want to have some way of going through the file and, and making like some kind of list or something. Um, so the first way I just showed you, uh, we have read lines. I'm just going to make um, each thing an, an item with. Uh, oh, I changed the file, so I'm going to change it back. Um, there we go. And uh, yes, yeah, so it's going to it's going to change it back to that. Um, and then uh, another way to go through it is to use um, dot read, and then we're going to dot split on those backslash ends. So then that'll give us the same or the same thing without without these uh, little backslash ends in each one. So do y dot read dot split on the new lines. Then you can do we have a uh, where each each line is uh, an item in the list. Okay. And the last thing we could do, which is kind of cool, is uh, so remember we did four i in a list where we had like a x equals one two three we, or uh, something like that. Then we said like four four i in x um, print i, and then uh, that would give us one two, right? Yep. Uh, so we could actually do this for a file, and the i's instead of being an item like list something, it's going to be a line in each one. And so there's a lot of people instead of writing i, they'll write line because remember you could call it anything you want. Um, this makes it easy to read. So we're going to print the line out. So then, yeah, so we're going to go, uh oh, to the X here somewhere. Oh, yes, in Y. There we go. Yeah, so now we have this. So, you notice how uh, when I'm printing this out, I'm getting these uh, empty lines between. It's because there's little uh, new line characters in there. If you want to get rid of that, I remember we can, uh, we can do our strip, and I'll get away with it. So, there we go. Now, no more lines there. So. Uh, this is a good way to go through with a for loop and do stuff with each line. Uh, if you want to make a list out of it, like we were doing with the other ones, uh, you could, it, I guess you could make an empty list and then append it. Uh, and I went ahead and stripped it so that the new lines would be gone. So uh, yeah, you see that each line is a item list. So real quick, there's some tricky things. So if we uh, if we print, um, let's see, print y dot read like that, and then then we're gonna just do this again, okay? Um, 